now the most important question, clinical question is, how is apathy different than depression? Well, they both are presenting with very similar presentation, right? They both can cause lack of interest, lack of initiative, low motivation, low energy, decreased concentration, decreased libido. The basic difference is that apathy targets the volition and depression targets the mood. But how will you differentiate this clinically? What should you know? What should you ask for? What should you see in the treatment response that can help you reliably differentiate apathy from depression? And this article talked about that. So number one is the affect. Now in apathy, a person lacks emotion. Whereas in depression, you see these emotions ranging from sadness to tearfulness. Second is the content of thought, like thought content. Apathy, a person does not care about what's happening, how they are feeling. So mostly family members can bring a person or bring this to our attention that this is what they're doing. But in depression, a person will bring this, right? There is no point in living, pessimistic, hopelessness, worthlessness. So very typical for depression. The third is the behavior. Apathy, a person is passive and compliant, but in depression, a person may avoid socialization or even the treatment compliance there. The fourth is suicidality, right? This is a risk factor that we need to always evaluate. Mostly a person with apathy is not suicidal, but of depression, with the worsening of depression, high severity, there is a risk of suicidality. And then fifth is comorbid anxiety. Mostly a person with apathy is not usually anxious that because they do not care but a person with depression may have a comorbid anxiety, right? And then ab about rumination, a person with apathy, this is usually absent, but in depression, this may be present. And then the presence of vegetative symptoms in apathy, mostly it's absent, but one of the vegetative symptoms is weight loss, which can happen if there is lack of initiative to, you know, organize meal intake. In depression, usually vegetative symptoms can occur, ranging from poor sleep, loss of appetite, and weight loss. And one of the other criteria is the longitudinal course. This is really important, clinically speaking. With apathy, you know, it can increase over time if this is a part of the neurodegenerative condition like dementia. And in depression, the interesting fact is it may resolve or fluctuate, but mostly in the late stage of neurodegenerative disease, it may even diminish as the, you know, progression happens. But with apathy, it will go up. Now the treatment features which can help us differentiate apathy from depression. First is response to activities. In a person with apathy, they may be amenable to structured activity, but with depression, they resist mostly the structured activity and do something called active avoidance. And then countertransference. This is very, very clinically, like psychodynamically based uh, concept. Countertransference is how a clinician uh, feels when uh, they are um, doing evaluation of a patient uh, with apathy, the sadness that a person is talking about mostly don't transmit to clinician, right? Uh, you know, in basic format speaking, if a person is sad, uh, a clinician will likely not feel that sadness. But with depression, a clinician will feel the sadness and despair. That's the counter transference topic. And the last and very important is response to antidepressant, right? You must have seen this a lot. If you give antidepressant to a person with apathy, they mostly don't respond. 
and a person with depression may respond to SSRI, like, not, sorry, not SSRI, antidepressant in general. So friends, this was very uh, basic overview of apathy versus depression. And uh, I will see you in the next video below.